everybody. Welcome back to the show. Hey, John. Hello. Hello. What's happening? John, I got to tell you, hearing the band together doing the theme song, it, it's truly moving. I just, oh, yes. I just love, I just love hearing you guys play together again. Thank you. That, it, it's, it feels good. And I feel like that sound has become so classic. It just brings me right back to the theater. Yeah, I did. I, there's so many reasons to get back to that theater. That is to hear you guys live. Is, yeah. I, just, I miss it. The energy that you bring to it. Um, I heard that. Totally ready to do a show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It, it snaps you in. It's, it's yeah. like um, it, it, it really is a, a physical memory. Yeah. And the energy that you guys play with is like, uh, you know, like those magnetic levitation trains. Yeah. Like you're the magnetic levitation for the entire show. Oh, my goodness. That moves my heart. That's what we try to do. We try to bring it every night so that the people can feel it everywhere. Uh, how do you how'd you do it? So I, I recorded first and I was listening to a click track just to kind of set the tone and get the vibe back. And then we had the click track there as a reference. So they could either listen to me or listen to the click track. And everybody layered on top of that and sent in the videos. And then our team at the show is amazing. They can put the stuff together from anywhere. Who knows how that happened? I wasn't a part of that part. <laughs> More, please. Yeah, it's coming. Oh, we, we, we've glad. been cooking. Good. Good, because I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. My guest tonight is a very funny comedian. You know from Oh Hello, Big Mouth, and John Mulaney and the Sack Lunch Bunch. Please welcome John Mulaney. Hey, Stephen. Hey, how are you riding out the, the, the quarantining? I'm are very you... lucky to be, to be riding it out well, yeah. yeah, yeah. How about me, yourself? Me too. Very lucky to be healthy. Uh, very lucky to have a job right now that I can still sort of do. Yeah, you do. You do have a job now. Yeah, yeah. Legally, they have to pay me. Um, I feel, uh, you know, there's a lot of terrible things happening. There is a nice uh, amount of camaraderie in that uh, we're all doing the same thing at once. Is that some solace for you that you, it, you that, that you're not alone? It's that at all least, humanity is doing this? All human. It's at least a, um, at best it's a comfort and at most it's a delight. And at least it's a delightful, like curiosity that every, like, do you know what you, me, OJ Simpson and Meg Ryan have in common? Uh, We're all gratefully had a relationship with John Mellencamp. True, yeah. Man, mm -hmm. OJ did not. If only he'd written a song about that. But we're also all quarantining. Yeah. You, That's, Steve yeah. Colbert, Telly Savales Jr., sure. uh, Banksy, all quarantining. <laughs> <laughs> the Dalai Lama? Is he? Good. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I got to imagine. Why would the Dalai Lama break the rules? That doesn't seem his style. He. No, I mean he. Breaks, Though the Chinese, the Chinese might have a different rules, thing to yeah, say about he breaks that. Breaks rules when they're worth breaking. Um, sure. Yeah, I wonder where he's staying. I haven't even thought about the llama. He's not crashing with me. No, he hasn't no. made it down there yet. No, but I bet he'd be a great house guest. He's always giggling. One thing I love about him and Desmond Tutu is they're always giggling. That's not great. What? That's not great. <laughs> That's a great thing. Adult man <laughs> giggling might be upsetting after a while. I don't know. What? In yes. small doses, it's lovely. Let's hear your giggle. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Okay. A lot of people <laughs> are having uh, odd dreams these days. Yeah. And I understand you've had a few. Let me just tell you mine really quickly because I'm the guest tonight. Uh, it, it's, uh, I dreamed that I had to do my show, but I had to do it someplace where no one could find me. Oh, I'd be in wow. trouble if anyone could find me, but I still had to do my show. Doctor? You'd be in trouble if anyone found you? Like the cops would find me doing my show, but I still had to do the show and broadcast it somehow, but not any place the cops could find me. That's yourself. Some part of you is conflicted about um, uh, performing and, you know, uh, cashing in, I'm kidding, about working during a, a time like this. So the oh, yeah. your inner, your inner yeah. moral compass, perhaps maybe a superego, maybe too far to one extreme, sure. uh, is, is 
you, you want to hide from that part of yourself that says, why, why am I making my children join a union yes. and be my PAs? Why but, must the show go on? Why must the show go on? Very okay. fair question. Enough of me, as fascinating as I am. Please, John. That is a good dream, though. And, I, and having no training, I knocked that out of the park. Yeah. Um, I wrote down a dream for, to, to tell you about because yeah. I'm, I'm perplexed by it for real. Wow, not every, not every guest brings notes. Wonderful. Well, please. Um, iPhone, by the way. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> Napa. Hey. Yeah. There you go. Oh, oh. Come Steve on. jobs, you know? Okay. So here's the dream, Stephen. I do an interview about Rob Reiner, who I don't know in real life. And I have worked with Rob Reiner in some small way. I am uncomfortable during this interview because I don't know him well enough and I am, uh, I am self-conscious that I will say something wrong. Uh, in this dream, as best as I can remember, Rob Reiner is Rob Reiner, the director. Okay, I tell the interviewer three things, one of which I think Rob Reiner might find too candid. So then I see Rob Reiner at a reception in a room with lots of floor to ceiling windows. It's not all glass, there's some light wood too. He has read the interview question mark or he is almost done. He mentions the first two things of the three things that I said. He does not mention the one thing that I was nervous about. Then he asks me to drive him around to see the cherry blossoms which are in season. <laughs> we are in the car. There is a sense we cannot get out of the car in a semi COVID quarantine way. Yes. I, keep pulling super, I keep pulling up super close to the cherry blossoms like we'll be under a tree and the blossoms are touching the windshield. I, want, I, I wrote, note, I am controlling the car from the passenger seat, but it's a regular car. I keep saying, look, Rob, there's a cherry blossom. He does not seem to acknowledge that we are seeing them. It's slightly annoying, but I am still too nervous that he read the full interview, so I'm being overly polite to him. I am exhausted at this point. We pull into a driveway, much like the kind I would see in my neighborhood of Greenpoint when I was younger. I point to one. It's 4.30 on the clock. I fall asleep the way I normally do if I'm riding in the passenger seat of a car. I wake up, it's 6.30 on the dot. Rob Reiner hands me a pill that is um, a medication in, in the dream. The pill is a medication I give my dog for acid reflux. He hands me the pill and he says, wake up. And then I woke up. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first thing about the dream that it gets right is that Rob Reiner is very demanding. <laughs> <laughs> he is, he is, he'll ask you to do all kinds of things and then you do it for him and he's like, ah, yeah, I don't that's like one. Him. Yeah, that yeah. one is, I'm surprised you don't know him because that's very much what he's like. I don't know him, no. You know, he's lovely. He's a very, he's a lovely guy. You he know, he was in all the Blossom family. He yes, he's all, all in the family and a family, great yeah. director too. Yeah, he's done other things since yeah. then. <sighs> you know Washington well, evidently, because the cherry blossoms are going mad right now. The I cherry imagine. blossoms have been, they bloomed uh, a couple weeks ago, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I think it's, I, I, it's, an, it's, an, it's an anxiety dream. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're showing Rob Reiner the cherry blossoms and he's not having a good time. That's anxiety. But that's not the anxiety. The anxiety is that you have said something to upset someone you admire and they may or may not have heard what you said and will yes. not reveal to you and therefore either lance the boil of the anxiety or eliminate the boil of anxiety. They won't say it to you. And so the pressure of the anxiety grows because your ignorance about the degree to which you have hurt their feelings, if at all, has, um, um, it, it keeps secret. It, it, yes. it festers like a secret, like carbuncle inside of your, your heart. Yes. Um, I think you should just call him. I think I will. I'm sure it's about my parents, but I'll also give Rob Reiner a call. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm a little upset with you right now. Go ahead. You haven't said anything about my hair. Your it's nothing hair? different about you. I have combed my hair from the other side. I normally comb it this way. It's gotten so long, I had to do something different. I combed it the other way. And I was about to ask you, the next question is, your hair looks great. And I went, no, f his hair. He right. hasn't said anything about my hair. Your hair <laughs> does look great. Thank you, I appreciate way. it. I appreciate and, it. And the thing that I, I'm glad to see that it looks great because when I was thinking about everybody like protesting to get their hair cut and everything and people getting shaggy, I thought, I can't imagine John Mulaney shaggy. 
No, didn't, don't care for it. Not judging it, but don't care for it. Are uh, you breaking the rules? Are you going to a secret celebrity barber? Why do you look good? I, I, I charter a plane and I go to Wisconsin and I drop in and get a cut. No, my wife, Anna Marie, was a makeup artist and hairstylist and still um, gives me fantastic haircuts. So she gave me one a couple weeks ago. Wow. And um, yeah, I, I, I don't know why. I don't like having uh, facial hair of any kind. And it doesn't like being on me. So can you, can you grow a beard? I can have hair on my face. Have you attempted to grow a beard? I have attempted to grow a beard. And mm -hmm. it looked like that magnet game where you drag metal dirt particles onto that bald Wooly Willy. I believe Wooly Willy is what <laughs> you're name, trying to pick his up. His name Wooly Willy? <laughs> Wooly Willy. Well, look, because you can do his hair and you yes. can do his face too, yeah. I never could do it. I'd have to lay it flat and do something. Now, I apologize, by the way. My perspective on you, see, I think in my head I thought, since we're all Edward Snowding it this, these days. Yes. Um, I think maybe I thought I had a flipped perspective. I'm, I'm no. sorry if you're not noticing the part. How does you it can tell it goes back way further on this side. Well, see, that's not a thing I would mention. <laughs> I'm really ready for like a lobotomy scar. Like I'm like that guy, not Chuck Heston, but the other one who gets captured by the apes and they cut out his brain. Have you oh, seen yeah. Of the apes? I have, yeah. I'm that right that. there. Also, I'm getting a very Sam Neill from Jurassic Park vibe in a way. Yeah. Has this Let work? Does you this haven't... work? Oh, yeah. Ready? Very much so. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> Did that work? Yeah, it did. That was fantastic. Good. All right, good. Hold on. Um, My ear thing just came out. Mm -hmm. Did you okay. grow, would you grow beards during things like the Writers Guild strike? Yes. No, yeah. I didn't do it during that. I grew up my eyebrows. No, I did not. I did not. I did not do any of that. I grew it between the two shows. I grew up. You did. I remember yeah. yeah. I had, uh, I had the, you know, sailor on shore leave. Yeah. Kind very, of yeah. look. Yeah. yeah. Did you enjoy that? I kind of did because not having like shoulders wider than my hips, it's my only like secondary male sex characteristic. It's the thing that like goes like, yes, that's, you know, because old men and old women begin to look alike as they, the way young children look alike as you get older. Oh, and I'm sure, getting old yeah. enough that I want something to go, that's, a, that's, definitely, that's definitely not an old woman. Well, you're not old at all, but I do know what you mean about that age when that sort of Tony Curtis age where you're like, <laughs> how are you? I would love that mane of white hair that he had. He had what, did he have a, he did not have a hair piece, but he insisted on growing his hair such that it always appeared he had a hair piece. I don't know. I don't what? know. I'll call, <laughs> I'll ask Jamie. Okay. You call Rob Reiner, I'll call Jamie Lee. This, that may be, you know what? Maybe I've just done the very thing I was afraid of, which was share too intimate of a detail about Tony <laughs> Don't curse. If you have a dream about Tony tonight, let me know. Hey, um, what'd you say about me? Is that, that's, a very, that's a pretty good Tony Curtis. That's a pretty decent Tony Curtis. He's no longer with us, is he? He's not. He passed away. So, so you're speaking ill of the dead. Am I speaking ill or am I wondering if he, like millions of Americans, like billions of Americans, have, have used a hairpiece? <laughs> but I don't know why wigs, all these people are showing their roots on TV, or maybe it was just one woman I saw. But I do think wigs and hairpieces should come in. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, because if you didn't like the length of your hair, if it's getting a little too much, mm -hmm. you can just braid it and, or bald cap it, wig cap it, and then wear a wig um, from one of America's great wig makers. Here, ready? Yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you. Talk about a magic trick. <laughs> Illusion! <laughs> We have to take a little bit of a break, John, but if you can stay there, and hopefully the audience will also stay there, and we'll be back with more John Mulaney.